Here are three common things that often happen before God brings someone new into your life. Number one, if God is taking you through a social cleanse to clear out those people that God doesn't want in your life, this is often a sign he's doing that to make room for someone new. Before a farmer can plant seeds and harvest an abundant crop, he first needs to clear the land. If the farmland is full of rocks and weeds and tree roots, it's gonna be very difficult for anything to really grow and get the nutrition that it needs. Likewise, before God will cause a healthy relationship to begin to grow in your life, he's going to clear the land, so to speak, and make room for those new relationships. One of the ways God will do this is by taking you through a social cleanse. Just like when a farmer is clearing the land, this can be really hard work. Some of those trees may have been growing for decades. Those weeds may have multiplied into thousands. And those rocks might be so big they're actually boulders. Likewise, when you are in a season of life where you've made unhealthy attachments and you know you need to clear your life of those unhealthy relationships, it can feel like an impossible task because those things have been growing for so long. Your relationships may have multiplied into other friendships and you know so many people through these unhealthy relationships that you formed that it's really become your social circle. It can feel like a boulder you just can't move. So again, this social cleanse can be very painful. It's a lot of hard work and it usually doesn't happen in an instance. But it is essential if these unhealthy relationships are stealing emotional energy from you and there's no room in your life for someone new to come in. Throughout the Bible, there's a pattern of getting rid of the old to make room for the new. As Leviticus 26 verse 10 states, and you shall clear out the old to make way for the new. And Ephesians 4, through 24 teaches, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. Number two, if you're gaining the courage to learn the social skills you need to learn to interact with the opposite sex, this is a good sign God is preparing you to meet someone new. I recently watched a movie called Land. I won't tell you everything that happens in this movie in case you wanna watch it, but essentially it's of a middle-aged woman who is very depressed because she lost her family. And she moves into the middle of nowhere, lives in a cabin by herself, and during the winter time, she's basically about to die because she doesn't have the necessary survival skills to live in an environment like this. As she's basically almost about to die, a stranger bursts through the door and nurses her back to health this man is kind, respectful, and just does everything he can to help this woman without asking for anything in return. I bring this up because this situation is often what many Christians are hoping is going to happen in their life. They're living basically alone, they're sad, they're depressed, they feel like they're dying, and they hope that someone just bursts into their life out of nowhere and gives them everything that they've been lacking. Is it possible for a stranger to come into your life out of nowhere who ends up being a great Christian, who loves you and pursues you and does all these things that you're hoping someone does for you one day? Sure, that is possible. Anything is possible with God. But is that likely? Is that the normal way healthy relationships are formed? No, it's very unlikely that someone just randomly shows up at your house and is the exact type of person you've been hoping to find. Normally, God puts us through a season of growth where we gain the knowledge and skills we need to interact with other people in social settings where we both can do our part, we both can connect with each other, and through that process, God forms a new relationship. So what should you do if you lack those social skills that God uses to form connections? What should you do if you struggle talking to the opposite sex? You get nervous around people you're attracted to. You just don't know what to say. You feel very awkward even around just anyone, whether you like them or not. Well, you have a few options. 
One, you could just do nothing and again, kind of hope for what I talked about in that movie, someone just randomly comes into your life. That's not likely to happen, but that is an option. Another option would be to just go out there and try to form a deep connection with someone without ever doing any real development first and just hope it goes well. Or you could get out there and start failing. You could get out there and start trying. You could get out there and start learning because through the process of trying and failing and trying again, that's really where God teaches us. And through getting taught what we're lacking, that's usually when God brings someone new into our life, when we're gaining the necessary social skills that are required. What's not an option, however, is to magically have a great relationship with no problems and to it instantly be perfect without doing any type of work to contribute to that great relationship. So if you're someone who feels pressured and nervous and just anxious about social settings, Really, you just need to get out there and practice. It's not easy. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fumble over your words. It's going to be awkward. You're going to show up places and not meet anyone. But that's a part of the process. And when you really go through that and you keep doing it, it really does get a lot easier and you learn. According to Proverbs 1 verse 5, growth is a process. And that truth remains true even when it comes to growing in relationship skills. And number three, if you're gaining the theological conviction that God has the power to introduce you to the right people at the right time, this is a good sign God is preparing you to meet someone new. When you read the epistles in the New Testament, most of them are laid out in the same way, especially when it comes to the letters Paul wrote. They start with the theology, they start with the doctrines and the core truths of the gospel, and then towards the end of the book, there's very practical information about marriages, about how to work well in your workplace, and how to live with other people. And so it starts with theology and then it moves to the practical. And I bring that up because in this instance, when we're talking about practical steps to meet new people, you really need to get your theology right first because if you feel like it all depends on you and you don't have a strong faith in God's sovereignty, you're going to freak yourself out. You're going to lack that courage and motivation to actually be open to new experiences and relationships. But when you know that this is ultimately in God's hands, that faith in that truth in God's sovereignty actually empowers you to live in an active, faithful way. As 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 11 says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ clear the way for us to come to you. God must clear the way for people to come into your life. This knowledge should not make us passive, just waiting for someone new to randomly show up at our doorstep. Rather, the knowledge that God has the power to create a new, healthy relationship in your life should empower you to take the necessary steps God is telling you to take so he can bless you. The video right here on top is called How to Get a Date as a Christian Introvert. The video right here on the bottom is called Four Reasons You Fear the Person That You Like. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. I really hope this was helpful to you. And until next time, God bless.